an unprecedented week for Bangladesh. Nobel laureate Mohammad Yunus is now the caretaker prime minister of the country, even as the regime prepares for a post-Sheikh Hasina era in Bangladesh. The transition for Bangladesh from here on will determine what really happens in the power competition that's underway in the Indian subcontinent between US, India and China. And that's our big story on India Ascents. The power dynamics that is at play in the Indian subcontinent and its impact from Myanmar to Pakistan to Nepal to Bangladesh to Sri Lanka. It is evident in all these countries. Take Maldives, for instance, that map on your screens. Current President Moizu won on an India out campaign and his government is now siding with China. Now, this in an extreme case could potentially impact even the movement and access to the Indo-Pacific, a possibility that impacts both India and the US. Move forward, take a look at Pakistan. To the U.S., it's still perceived as a key partner to remain relevant in Afghanistan. It's also being offered truckloads of loans and money by China for precisely this reason, that Pakistan is important for U.S. and it's important for India because it is part of its strategic and security calculus. Take a look at Nepal, where prime ministers are practically playing musical chairs. The current PM. Oli has been the PM for the third time in nine years, has a history of being hostile to India. In the past, he laid claims to areas that lie at the tri-junction with India and China, the one which is one of the routes to Mansarovar. So that again is where you see India-China engaged in a power play. Same is the case with Bhutan, where China has been using its checkbook to get access to this strategically important Doklam region. And India continues to build on its strong and historic ties that it shares with Bhutan in trade, transport, people-to-people -people areas. Now let's move on to Colombo, another country at the Indo-Pacific where the power play is happening. It needs large funds to continue its economic revival. China's loans are the very reason why Colombo is in the economic misery that it is. But it has a compromised public finance, which means it can go back to China. So how do you counter it? Competitive or probably collaborative funding, aid, grants is what is needed from India and the US to be part of this power play and to be a significant player. Now let's move on to Bangladesh, where China, India and the US have differing goals and they have differing approaches to achieve those. India backed the January election, US did not. In fact, in this mess, China swooped in and has been doing so for the last decade. What has it done? It didn't get into the election. It ensured that it provided Dhaka with submarines and its very first submarine base. And that's the important, that in the immediate India needs to focus on the long land border it shares with Bangladesh, the longest, and also prepare for a humanitarian challenge. But the long term, countries that sit on key connectivity routes and strategic points on the Indo-Pacific are essentially playing big powers amongst each other. And India needs to get this power dynamics right. US sanctioned Awami League leaders after the January elections this year in Bangladesh but did not do so when it happened in Pakistan, where the army rigged the election completely. Why? Because for the US, it's not the election per se that matters. It's the hedging of its strategic risks in the region that matters, because it is engaged in this deep power play in the Indian subcontinent. And India needs to now do the same, ace its game. Visit to the Maldives by Foreign Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar is a first and good step, but it needs to build on this further.